So without any further ado, please welcome Josh Cobb. So I was inspired by, uh, by Steve's talk before. I didn't actually have any photos of, uh, of any of my family members in my talk, but I thought, uh, because Steve did, I thought I'd throw up a photo there to kick things off and introduce you to my six-month-old little boy. So this is Leo. Leo, uh, like Steve, he is the reason that to travel a lot with my job, uh, but it's certainly the, the not being away for too long when they get to about this age, as those of you with kids will know, you start to miss them a fair bit. So uh, this is my little boy. So thanks, Steve, for the inspiration. I couldn't, couldn't not share that one as well. But on to our business. And uh, my background, uh, I was a, after I left school, I, I joined the uh, music industry. And I was a drummer in a band, travelling around Australia, wanting to be a rock star. That was, my, that was my dream, to be a drummer in a band, touring the world, playing in these amazing uh, venues all over the globe. Uh, Unfortunately, it turns out you need a little bit of talent to be in the music industry, so that didn't last very long. Um, I had a lot more hair back then as well. Uh, but something I was passionate about was growing audiences. So I managed bands uh, as well as playing in bands, and, and something that I found a lot, a lot of fun was bringing audiences to venues and getting, ve getting that audience to engage with a band uh, and to keep coming back to shows. That was something that I, I absolutely loved doing. So fast forward, uh, moved back to Brisbane from Melbourne and uh, the music capital of, the, of Australia back then and looked at something a little more lucrative than the music industry and I looked at real estate thinking, gee, these guys earn a fair bit of money, surely, surely it can't be that hard. Uh, how silly I was, uh, it is very difficult to earn good money in real estate as some of you in the room are probably thinking, yeah, bullshit. Uh, but it is quite a difficult industry uh, for even some of the, the, the beginner agents. So, looked at, um, everything okay? Looked at property management uh, as, a, as a way of my introduction to the industry to learn as much as I could uh, about the industry before jumping into a sales role uh, and having a little bit more confidence to, that I might be able to do, do well in this industry. So, uh, turns out property management is a really tough gig as well. Uh, but something I hated doing in real estate, which you were taught to do. Any real estate agents in the room, by the way? Yeah, just one? You know, what, you know, how, the, you know how you know if there's a real estate agent at a party, right? Does everyone know? Don't worry, they'll tell you. Um, <laughs> but I, I hated cold calling, and I hated prospecting, and I hated, I, I didn't like sales. Unfortunately, Steve, it wasn't my passion. It just didn't resonate with me to try and conjole people uh, into buying things that I knew that they probably didn't need. And it just didn't fit with me. I was a terrible salesperson. So I looked for other ways to build an audience and get people to call us. That was my goal. And a lot of people, all my sales coaches and principals of the real estate agencies that I worked for told me I uh, was never going to cut it. That in this industry, it's all about the numbers. You've got to get on the phone. You've got to make the calls. You've got to knock on the doors. And I thought it was a complete load of shit. So I started looking for other ways to get people to call us. And I fell into this... I, I became a student of marketing and looked for how other businesses all around the world were growing their, their business. And I stumbled across digital marketing as something that was so measurable. Digital marketing is telling stories about how people are interacting with your brand and allows you to make changes as you go along. That's not something you can do offline with newspaper advertising or anything that you do uh, that isn't on the internet. It's very difficult to measure your marketing if it's not digital. So it's something I found a passion for. So fast forward to 2014, we, uh, we launched Steps in October and uh, we didn't have any products or services to sell. Not one. So the goal for the first 12 months was to grow an audience around inherently helpful content. And that content for us was a podcast. So I rang around all my renter crowd from my consulting days in real estate and spoke to leaders all around the country but also over in Northern America and Europe as well and uh, asked them if they'd be kind enough to be a guest on my podcast, this new thing that I wanted to start. And luckily, I had some, some people that said yes, and John was one of those, thank, thank God. And uh, 
I started interviewing professionals in the real estate space, marketing space from all around the world. And about nine months in, we started to get people calling us saying, what, what do you sell? How do you make money? How can you help us? Fast forward to today, we uh, have 70,000 70, 70, 70, listeners to the podcast all over the world. And in 18 months, we've generated over a quarter of a million dollars in revenue in 18 months as a result of building an audience around content that we knew was of inherent value to people and then creating products and services that they said they wanted. So I wanted to share with you not only that story, but really the, the mindset shift that I believe is the ultimate business advantage today. And that is to think less of less like the people that are in your industry and think more like a publisher. And for a lot of you, that is very challenging, especially those of you in sales. Because for us, we didn't know whether it was gonna work. For nine months, we created content with no idea what we were gonna sell, but the people who listened to the show and the people who subscribed to the podcast told us what they wanted. And we, would be, we were able to then create products and services that they wanted. So. Our job today, we travel the world helping real estate professionals. We have clients in the United States, Canada, New Zealand, uh, and here in Australia. And our goal is to help them stand out on the internet and to drive revenue and profit into their business. That is, our, that is what we do. Now, there are a lot of places on the internet that you can have a presence, each and every one of you that are in business, but there is one that trumps all others. Does anyone know what it is? Anyone know what it is? Social media? What's that? Have you got that sound from, uh, what's the sound from Family Feud? Bow, bow. Social media is not the most important platform on the internet for your business. Yes. Google, that's a good one, but no. Anyone else want to have a guess? 100%. Your website is the most important platform on the internet for your business. Does anyone want to have a guess why? Yes, down the front again. Yes, absolutely. Your website is the only platform that you own on the internet. If you, have, if you are focused on building an audience on social media and it grows to, say, a quarter of a million people, what happens when Facebook shuts down tomorrow? They're gone. Whether it's on, if you're a real estate agent, realestate.com.au, domain.com.au, the major platforms for real estate agents, social media, if you're in business just in general, uh, if you're an e-commerce store, uh, if you're advertising on things like eBay or Amazon, anything like that, if any of those platforms shut down tomorrow, there is nothing you can do about it. You are simply a product of their audience. You're, uh, sorry, a product of their company, and they're a company just like yours. So what I want to show you tonight is how we believe... There we go, little Leo. Your website is the center of your universe after tonight. Now, there are three core functions of your website. Number one, credibility. If you go to a dinner party and there's a little bit of sauce on the shirt, that doesn't make you any less intelligent to add value to that person or those people at that dinner party. But every, everyone's thinking, what's with the sauce? So your website, number one, is credibility. Number two around credibility is, is the content up to date? Is the spelling and grammar correct? Simple, basic stuff that we look at on a website and we've been into real estate agencies all over the world where they've had staff who have gone to jail who are still on their website. Crazy, right? But it happens. So I want you to have a look at that graph and think of your website as the center of everything you do in marketing today. Absolutely everything, online, offline, social media, no matter where you're marketing your business, your website should be the center point of every bit of marketing that you do because it is the only platform that you own and the only platform that you can control. So we refer to it as the sun and we refer to social media and all the other platforms as planets and all those planets should be feeding back into your website. Number two is you can use your website as a set of conversion funnels. 
Revenue and profit, that's what we're in business to do. Social media and the internet can be very fun on a personal level. I think we'd all agree with that. But we're here tonight to talk about business. So one thing I want to show you, a little bit of software that you can all write down and take back to your offices tomorrow. I want to share a story with you first. So we're running a workshop at the moment for real estate agents. And we launched this website about four weeks ago. Our event is not for another month. And when we launch a website these days, we use a bit of software called Hotjar, H-O-T-J-A-R. And what this allows us to do, it's telling us how people are interacting with our website. So I'm just going to hit play here and you guys can watch this. So some of you, who's got Google Analytics on their website? Who pays attention to it? So this is a person on our website the other day. Uh, this is actually them. This is a recording of that person. I don't know who they are. I don't know their name. I don't know their phone number. But I know how they're interacting with our website. So we had all these little, this little thing here, down the bottom, we had all sorts of little pop-ups and different things all over the website that people kept closing down. We could see them doing it in the recordings. So what did we do? We got rid of them. And in the last four weeks, we've generated over $45,000 for this event in four weeks as a result of being able to see how people are interacting with the website and make changes that are going to drive those conversions even further. So the number one thing I want you to take away from this part of the presentation is really to crave the insights of how people are interacting with your marketing. You can't do that offline. You don't know how many people have taken your flyers into their house and stuck it on the fridge and read it, passed it on to a family member. This is telling everything we, you need to know about how people are interacting with your business. Such a powerful little tool. I better stop it here before they start putting their credit card details in. Now, number three, my absolute favorite part of marketing today, your website is your publishing engine to the stars. And something I talk a lot about with real estate professionals everywhere is thinking less like a real estate agent and more like a publisher. Now, I want to ask you guys a question. What's the number one star rating system of restaurants in the world? John? Michelin. What did Michelin do? They make tires. So who gave Michelin the permission to start a restaurant rating system? No one. So my challenge for you tonight is to think how you can add value to your consumers outside of the products and services that you sell. Everyone hear that? How do you add value to your consumers outside of the products and services you sell? This is a company that we worked with called Image Property Management in Brisbane. They're a property management company, so they manage property. But what they've done is use their website to publish inherently helpful content that answers the questions that their landlords and their tenants are asking. They use this content to push out to social media, bring it back into the website to generate leads for their business. And when we launched that website in October 2015, They've generated $324,981 as a result of publishing inherent, inherently helpful content to their website, pushing it out to the masses on social media and Google and all those other wonderful channels on the internet, bringing them back to the platform that they own where they control what happens next. And it's resulted in $324,000 in revenue. Not bad, huh? You can't measure this stuff offline. So one thing I want to challenge you guys to do is to think less, like of the, think less like the people in your industry and more like a publisher. And I want you to think of the questions that the people are asking in your business and publish it on the internet, on your website, and use those other wonderful channels to bring people back to your website where you can control what happens next. This is something we plugged in when we started the podcast with over 70,000 people ago. And we just asked them, hey, before you go, you may not be able to read that. Before you go, what is one thing you'd like to learn more about when it comes to marketing your business on the internet today? 
and I could show you the Evernote file. We've got thousands of responses to that question. We don't have to guess what people want to hear about from us. We don't have to guess about the products that they want to get, that they want us to build for them. You need to be asking the thinking of the questions your customers are asking, putting them on your website, getting people to your website. That is the most important lesson I want you guys to take away. And just to prove my point, because the clock is ticking, I've got 10 seconds left, I want to ask you guys a question. Who do you guys think is the funniest man in the history of humanity? Any guesses? Someone shout something out, please. Jim Carrey, Mr. Bean. Who was it? Oh, I can't hear you, sorry. Charlie Chaplin, okay. Robin Williams? Pretty funny guys, right? Can everyone see that? So the point I want you to take away from tonight is that you can be anyone you want to be on the internet, even if it's not true. You can be anyone you want to be on the internet, but you need to publish to it. We should be so thankful that we live in a time where you don't need to, be, you don't need to advertise on TV or radio. You don't. You can be your own TV or radio station. Guys, thank you. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you.